On our mountains in the UK, we usually expect to see grasses and heaths with muted colours of green and brown. But hidden away on some cliffs and ledges are brightly coloured little survivors called Arctic alpine plants. As the name suggests, Arctic alpine plants are usually found in the cold Arctic lands or in the high mountains of the world. They're usually small, they form cushions or mats so that they can hold in the warmth and also so that they minimise exposure to the cold and biting winds. So what are they doing growing in Wales where we have a mild, damp climate, very different to their usual environment? Imagine the end of the last glaciation in Britain. Ice would have covered much of the land until about 10 to 12,000 years ago when it started to retreat, exposing a cold Arctic landscape. These Arctic alpine plants would have colonised that landscape, moving northwards following the glaciers as they retreated. And they would have thrived here for many years until the climate started to warm a little bit more and then warmth-loving plants started to move in. These were better at competing for space and for nutrients, so the Arctic alpines were forced to move higher up into the cold mountains where they were free from competition and where the climate suited them better. These plants are still growing on these cliffs, but in recent years they've had to suffer a number of challenges. Firstly, they can't tolerate grazing, and with the predominance of grazing in the Welsh hills, they've been forced to retreat even further to more inaccessible sites, reducing the numbers to very small isolated groups of plants. And consider the tufted saxifrage, which has declined to just a few plants on a couple of boulders in Comidwell. It grows nowhere else in England and Wales. So an injudicious foot or a wandering sheep could result in its extinction from the whole of Wales. Also, in the Victorian era, the Victorians were insatiable collectors of rarities, especially rare plants and particularly ferns, such as the oblong woodsia, which is now reduced to just 12 tiny little plants in the whole of Wales. Local mountain guides would take them up to see these rare plant sites, or they'd collect the rarities themselves and then sell them to make a living. Collecting is seldom done these days, but its legacy still remains. And the final challenge is the more present day is climate change. These plants are right on the edge of their range, and so they probably cannot tolerate increases in rainfall or the ri rises in temperature that climate change would entail. These factors have resulted in one of the main problems facing Arctic alpines in the UK today. The numbers of individuals in each species are so small and the populations are so isolated from each other that they're in danger of losing the genetic diversity that they need to cope with the changing world. They need bigger populations so that they can cross fertilise with each other and build up diversity and potential adaptability to cope with whatever the future will throw at them. You might not think that their loss in the UK is important, especially if they're found in numbers in other parts of the world. But plants right on the edge of the range are often slightly different to those in the centre and they're adapted to different conditions. And these differences are the things on which evolution works to produce new forms and eventually new species. The loss of these species is almost like death by a thousand cuts. If you lose one or two of the populations, then that is perhaps acceptable. But if everyone has that approach, then you soon end up with the losses mounting up and up and you're just left with the core population and with very little chance of expansion or revolution. So what do we need to do to protect these plants and ensure that they can survive on the Welsh mountains for years to come? Well, basically all we need to do is to give them room. They'll never grow on all this open grassy ground. There's too much competition from the grasses and also it's too wet. But they would grow on the steep rocky ground below the sites where they normally grow and on the screes. So all, all we need to do is to give them some protection, give them some room and they'll do the rest and hopefully build up enough diversity to be able to cope with the changing climate. Then there's recreational activities. There's a lot more people using the hills these days and the effect of recreation could be quite great. But at the moment there's very good education and cooperation between the different bodies and most people are very aware of the need to protect these plants. And lastly there is grazing. Now we don't want to remove grazing from all the mountains in Wales. We know where these plants grow, they need a certain type of rock, they need a certain climatic conditions, and we know where these sites are. So all we need to do is to protect them on these particular sites, 
so that would be a big win for a very small loss of grazing. Now this has already happened in one very important site for Arctic alpines in Wales. And this is Comidwell National Nature Reserve where we are now. It's really important for these species and a lot of them grow on the cliffs at the back here. But it was very heavily grazed until about 20 years ago when grazing was removed from just this one small site in the much bigger Snowdonia area. And already the results are spectacular. On the back of the comb, if you walk up towards Devil's Kitchen, you can see mossy saxifrage cascading over the rocks at the right time of year. The heather's already regenerating in the bottom part of the comb, and if you come in here in July, you'll see the bog asphodel, and it looks wonderful. It looks like a buttercup field. So next time you're here, take a bit of time to look around and see if you can find any of these survivors spreading off the cliffs and spreading down onto the broken rocky ground and gladdening the heart of any mountain walker.